Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and in this video art tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to engage students in making art. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. Number one is to be smiling and be excited. It doesn't matter how you're actually feeling that day and what your real feels are. If you're wanting to engage kids in art, it is best to smile and be real excited when you are teaching. And much like I'm doing right now, because there's nothing that is more boring than listening to somebody talk up there like this. All right, so we're gonna take a look at doing some pinch pots today. Um, we're gonna grab a bowl of clay, blah, 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 blah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it really kills creativity, but if you are and I know it's really hard to do this because sometimes we don't actually feel like smiling and being excited. I acknowledge that. That is my feels even right now in this moment. You know, we got our own personal lives going on. You got your personal life. I got my personal life outside of being misertastic. And sometimes things are not always cheery and happy or things happen and it sucks. And I get that. <laughs> I acknowledge 100%. But it is a kind of like putting on, you know, you go to work, you put on some clothes that you would wear to work. I put on this because it's misertastic. And now I gotta also put on that face of being misertastic, or in your case, being a teacher. And we're gonna smile and we're gonna fake it till we make it and be excited. Because how much more engaging is it if we are excited to see them? They are feeling that as well, right? They're like, oh, so my teacher's excited to see me today instead of I can feel like they don't want anything to do with me. I'm not gonna engage if I sense that that person is wanting nothing to do with me. How can I trust or respect them if they're looking at me like this? Right? But if they're looking at me like this, it's inviting, it's warm, they're, I feel like they care. And I think that goes so much farther. So fake it till you make it if you have to. And smile and be excited. I know you can do it. All right. Number two is to survey to find out student interest. And you can do this in two ways. One is you can get a post-it note pack and give one post-it note to each child. And this will be their exit ticket. And you'll say, all right, on your way out today, we're going to, I'm going to do a survey and I would like to know what you're interested in right now. So write one thing that you're really interested in right now, whether it's a book, a movie, a video game, an animal, whatever it is, write that one thing on there. You don't have to put your name on it. And when you're done, you're going to quietly stand up. You're going to push in your chair. You're going to tiptoe over to me, give me your post-it note, and you're going to quietly line up at the door and that will be your exit ticket right you're already burning down the mood and sending them on their way it's not like a whole bunch of chaos it's a quiet whoosh, gone or while they're working if you don't want to do it as an exit ticket you can just put a piece of paper write the teacher the class's name on the top of what class it is and grade and then as you're working you're going to pop on over to each table you're going to sit down with them take your stool sit down at their table chat them up check in on all your students you use this as your opportunity to check in on them and then once you've done that you say hey how's it going is anybody help with anything blah 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 blah. and then if everybody's gonna be like all right i'm just doing a little survey to find out what you're all interested in right now and that's going to help me plan some future art lessons because i believe in honesty and telling them why um and then that's part of earning trust and earning respect notice i say earning is not a given and then as you're doing this you're writing down their ideas you're like okay what are you interested in right now claire awesome thank you so much claire you write down unicorns whatever it is um thank you bob dinosaurs it is and you're serving to find your interest and then afterwards at the end of the day you're going to circle some commonalities amongst your classes and then use these in this information your post-it notes or your paper use your survey as uh as a means of collecting ideas of what art lessons to plan and you can combine it with, any, with stuff so it's relevant to the curriculum, right? Like it could be dinosaur line art, right? Or value scale unicorns or monochromatic unicorns, whatever it is, you can tie it into the curriculum that way, but it's still themed around their, your students' interests. 
Okay, number three is to try doing rotating exploration stations. So this is a great way um, to encourage exploration and creativity um, and getting student engagement by changing up what they're doing throughout the class. But also if you have something that's like a special um, exploration that maybe you don't have a lot, it's hard to do for the whole class all at once, um, or you don't have a bunch of it, like maybe you have, uh, you want to do printmaking, but you only have five brayers, um, or you have, want to do some digital media art, but you only have five tablets to access to, or whatever it is, something, or you don't really want to do either of those with the whole class, because it's really hard to manage. That's another thing. Then you can do some exploration stations. So you can set up all your different tables with the different stations. So maybe one is a whole bunch of um, recycled materials, scrap, scrap paper, scrap fabrics, whatever, and they can just explore doing mixed media or at one table, collages, what doesn't matter, it's like a free-for-all, let them figure it out. Another table has some origami stuff and books and papers and they can figure it out. Another books is a little bit more, another table, sorry, is a little bit more chill. It has some art themed books, there's some art history books, how to make art books, how to draw books, um, books about artists, all there, all the vibes are at that book, that station, they can pick a book and take a look through it. Another station is um, drawing prompts. Maybe one jar has adjectives or one jar has nouns and they pull out an adjective and noun, popsicle stick and put it together. So creepy carrots. Oh, I have to draw a creepy carrot at this table, awesome. Uh, or there is oh, just one prompt at the table or an art choice board, one art choice board at the table and they can pick some, one thing from the choice board to draw or draw whatever prompt you have and put it in a picture frame, it looks super cute. And then they come to your station and then you're doing your small group instruction, right? So all the other tables are designed to be independent learning. They're not, you do not need to help them. They have to be basic enough that they can do everything at those tables by themselves. Um, but they are, they're, they're all different and engaging, right? They're all experimentation, they're all creativity based, they're all um, uh, process based learning. Whereas when they come to you, now we're gonna do some small group instruction with the class table group that you're with. So whether it is doing a little printmaking, whether it's doing um, whatever, whatever it is, and if something that, I don't care, it doesn't matter, whatever it is that you wanna do with them, your instructional piece, pinch pots, doesn't matter, then you can do that in your small group instruction. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have them rotate throughout the class, or however, however long the class is, um, and then they're going to go through it. And my recommendation is you do the same thing with all your classes to make it super simple, right? Because you can just scale up your small group instruction part up or down for the level of kids, but the other ones you could do easily with K to 12, right? Like K, K can do collage, so can grade 12. And they're gonna get, they're gonna automatically produce their own very different results. Obviously you're not gonna do a K to 12 school, but just for example, I'm just saying, they would produce their own very different results automatically. Um, and of course, your small group instruction, you could do scale up or down for the grades. All right, um, so that would be a good one to do. And then number four is to focus more on experimenting and process over so much product. So encouraging the students to explore and explore their own personal growth and process and, um, and understanding mediums over beautiful, perfect finished products all the time. I'm not saying just be like, oh, you know, discount um, and discredit uh, good quality work and then you're gonna accept just garbage. I'm not saying that because some kids do rush things through things that like that, but maybe thinking about art projects that you can include that are more exploration based um, learning and, and letting them maybe decide what the end product is over what you're deciding what the end product is. Um, you could do like um, symmetry butterflies where you put paint on one side and close them and open them and then add things to it and make it nice and big and you're exploring process and seeing what happens that way versus, and it will be beautiful and complete, right? But they might not all be the same and be the exact same as your example is what I'm saying. And that's cool too. All right. And then five is to do more small group instruction. So I would encourage either you going and visiting each table during work time and sitting there and working with them, you know, five minutes at each table or so. Um, or you can have a rainbow table at the back and you could choose to call one group table over at a time. Um, one class, you bring one table over. Next class, it's a different group of kids. Or you can do it from like, you know, kids that need the most support to the least support, pulling them up seeing who needs help or whoever wants help in the classroom can come sit at your table and work with you. Um, if you're pulling up a group of kids, um, just calling, you know, making your own groups, you know, 
kids that need more support versus kids that don't need as much support. Maybe see the more support ones twice as much as you see the other ones. Um, and then you just group them at the beginning of the year. And then you try to call them up um, to, you know, have a small group instruction session in every single class, right? And that way you can meet with them and then try to meet their needs and help them catch up or, or, or just grow in their own way, right? We want them to grow at their own speed, but we want them to continuously progress in those incremental steps to getting better, right? And whatever that looks like for each individual. Um, so we're teaching the child, not the grade. That's the idea. We're teaching the child and we're trying to help that person, that individual grow and whatever that means to them. So doing more small, small group instruction, um, even if they're, you're pulling up your groups and there's some kids that don't need any help, but even just being there, um, they maybe can chat them up, get to know them more and strengthen that relationship while like, working together, I think. And maybe sometimes they will, they're like, oh, I don't need any help. And then maybe then they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I could use a little support and you can help them out, try to figure something out. All right, so that's my ideas. My question for you today is this. What struggle are you feeling when it comes to teaching art? So what, do you have any struggles when it comes to teaching art? Let me know in the comments of this video and I would love to help you. Also, if you're looking for some more art teacher specific professional development, check out Art Teacher Academy. It is my professional development program. It's an online course that will give you 10 professional development hours at the end as well as you'll get a full workbook to work through that you get to keep. All the templates that are I talk about, I also include and you get to keep as well. Um, you also, in, in with your enrollment, get my art creation toolkit that will give you some lesson plans for our lessons that you can use right away in your classroom and implement. Um, and you also get forever access. That means you can come back to the, there's no time limit of when you have to do it or how, whatever, there's no schedule of when you have to learn or not um, and you get forever access which means you can come back and watch the videos and do the lessons as many times as you want and i'll be covering things like lesson planning your scope and sequence um, classroom management time management productivity tips for you to help you be more efficient um, uh, classroom uh, student engagement and participation and so much more and you can check that out at by searching on google art teacher academy Art Teacher Academy or hitting the link in the description of the video or you can scan the QR code on the screen and that will take you to Art Teacher Academy so you can learn more information about my professional development program. I very much hope I can see you in that course and it is again online means you can do it anywhere anytime and you'll get your certificate of completion for your pro D hours at the very end when you're done as well as you get your bonus um, art creation toolkit all included. All right, my friend, that is so much. For, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, if you're needing more art resources, you can check out the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store to find individual art lessons. There are over 900 art lessons available, everything from grid draws to write and draws to craft and writes to art and writes to art, full art project tutorials, everything for the units for the elements of art and principles of design, um, uh, resources for all the holidays and seasons, artists and art history, and so much more in the Ms. Artastic store on Teachers Pay Teachers. You can search Ms. Artastic on CPT, or I'll have the link in the description below for that as well. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode. Again, how to teach art at home. Watch it by clicking the link above or below in the description of the video, and I'll see you in that episode.